Hey kids, this is the Biston Fly here, hope you're well. Now absolutely freezing but lovely day to be out on another motorcycle. I'm very pleased to be say to say that I'm on a bike that uh, I wanted to ride for some time. This is the Baby Bonneville, the Triumph T100, the newest in the uh, Bonneville family of Triumph Retros. Lovely little bike to ride and if you stay tuned for the next uh, few minutes I'll give you my first impressions type review of the Triumph T100 Bonneville. So the first thing I uh, noted when I jumped on the bike was just how easy it is to ride. Now I've been riding this bike now for a couple of hours, I've done about uh, 100 miles or so on it and uh, I've really really enjoyed it. It's uh, very light uh, which is something you notice quite quickly compared to the T120 which I rode a while ago, nothing coming, it feels a lot more flickable and given it's got the uh, smaller engine I have to say, it's got no lack of grunt, thank you sir. It goes really, really well. I was on uh, the motorway earlier, and I was cruising along at 70, no problem at all. And, uh, you know, at no point did I think this bike is underpowered. So, uh, I really enjoyed the T120 when I rode that, but I have to say, this one has kind of stolen my heart already. It's light and flickable and a joy to ride. The clutch is super light, the seat is comfortable, the only thing really I can find not to like about it at the moment are these mirrors that uh, work absolutely fine but they're just sort of hideously stalky and, and funny looking. I think uh, I'd have to replace those with some uh, bar end mirrors or something a little bit more stylish. In terms of the comfort though, the seat very comfortable indeed. As I say I've been on it for a couple of hours and I've got uh, absolutely no signs of numb bum at the moment. Uh, the riding position itself, my, I'm sitting dead upright as you'd expect. Uh, in the sort of classic motorcycling position, if you were to s sort of sit on your settee and pretend you're riding a bike, your arms would naturally fall into the position that uh, mine currently are. And my legs, uh, slightly uh, less than 90 degrees, a little bit of a bend, but uh, nothing extreme at all, very, very comfortable, and you could ride all day long, pretty much as I have been actually, uh, on this little bike with no problem whatsoever. And likewise, she's an absolute dream. As I say, light and flickable. Much more so, much more noticeably than the uh, than the old uh, previous generation Bonnevilles. It's just a completely different machine. Uh, as far as that's concerned, it feels much more lively in all respects. The engine's much better. Uh, the handling is much better. Everything about it is better. As indeed it was on the Street Twin and the T120. But uh, out of all three of those, uh, of the new Bonnevilles I've ridden so far, this one to me is by far the nicest. Uh, it's just a great little bike. So at speed, you do of course get a bit of wind blast because it's a, a naked bike. But here we are doing 70 on a dual carriageway. And uh, it's nice and smooth, the airflow. So uh, it's not buffeting or fatiguing. So a bit of dual carriageway on motorway work, not a problem for this bike. And uh, just overtaking there, look, pulling away from 70 for a quick blast to overtake, no problem at all. And it feels like there's plenty more there. One of the things I really like about this uh, latest generation Bonnevilles, in particular the uh, T100 and T120 and the Thruxton as well of course, are these uh, are the dials on here. I, I like the fact that on this, the T100, the baby Bonnie, they put the two dials on, not just a single dial like there is on the street twin. I just think that adds a bit of class to the bike. Handling on the bends is absolutely lovely, she's beautiful and stable. The sun coming into the old eyes, always adds to the fun. Brilliant bike in town as well. Uh, I've been through, done some town work on her, and uh, she's great just nipping through the traffic because of the uh, light weight of it. What's this Skoda up to? Looks like she's going to pull over. She sounds lovely. I don't know if you can hear that much through the microphone, but it's got a very low burble. It's uh, not very loud, the engine. So it's nice on a long run, it's not fatiguing, but it just sounds very characterful. I imagine with some uh, aftermarket pipes it would uh, it would be even better, it could definitely do with a little bit more volume I think in the pipe department. The brakes are a bit rubbish I have to say, uh, that's one of the things that they've skipped on or rather economised on on the T100 over the T120, it's just got a single disc on the front uh, and you do have to give it a fair haul to stop it at speed. Um, I mean they're adequate, they're just uh, 
not the best brakes I've ever tried. The rear brake works fine. Sounded lovely. There's no, uh, there's no noticeable vibration through the handlebars, which is nice. The mirrors work well, although they look horrible. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll find somewhere to stop and uh, I'll show you around the bike. Okay then, let's give you uh, the all-important statistics and a little walk around and look at this, uh, this beauty then. Uh, as I've done before, I think we'll go for the iPhone version, because uh, I can then see exactly what I'm filming. There we go. Okay, so here we go then. This is the uh, Baby Bonneville, the T100. Uh, lovely looking machine. It's got all the uh, all the style of its bigger brother, brother T100. But it's a little bit cheaper. It's about, uh, I think, £1,800 cheaper. The on-the-road price, uh, according to the uh, the Triumph website, is something like £8,300, um, which makes it pretty good value in my book. Um, it's they do do an A2 license friendly version as well, so it's a great bike if you want your first big bike then and you've not yet uh, got your full license then you can get the A2 version. Uh, this, although it looks retro of course, comes with all the mod cons. It may look old fashioned, but it very much isn't an old fashioned bike and it certainly doesn't feel like an old fashioned bike when you ride it. It's got ABS, it's got traction control, ride by wire throttle, uh, it's even got a USB port on it. Um, doesn't have any of the uh, engine modes though, that's something that the uh, T120 has that this doesn't have. Uh, in terms of the engine, this is the engine out of the Street Twin, which is the 900cc, um, I think they call it the high torque engine. Let's have a little look. Actually it's on the other side, now here we go. Yeah, the 900cc high torque engine, and basically all the power is low down on this. Uh, which actually is very handy in the real world. And again, uh, they've done some really nice jobs with the styling here, like the just little things like the uh, the red cap where the um, spark plug is, and the uh, the little details down here on the engine casings, which can change. These are eminently customizable. Uh, one of the other things, as I mentioned, is it's got a single disc front brake, whereas the T120 has uh, the two discs. That oddly, of course, has the effect of making this feel lighter to steer and actually much more nimble, which I think is a good thing. Uh, it's got the 270 degree crank which gives it that nice sound that we heard and in terms of power it's 54 bhp at 5900 rpm 80 newton meters of torque so nothing to write home about but certainly adequate for real world riding front wheel is an 18 inch rear wheel is a 17 inch it's got nissan brakes dry weights 213 kilograms and the seat height is a friendly low 790 millimeters uh, the fuel tank that'll carry let me check my notes 14 and a half litres and uh try and say you'll get 74 miles per gallon out of it and in fact in the long run that i'm doing at the moment so i've been running it for a couple of hours it's actually saying i'm getting something like 90 miles per gallon if the trip computer is to be believed anyway really impressed with it so far and uh, looking forward to riding it much more so let's uh, hop on and carry on one of the things i do love about this is this uh, low seat height just makes it a very friendly bike to use great that low burble the other thing I've noticed it's got a great turning circle great for getting out of tight spots maneuvering in town and so on Love the sound of this puppy. The clutch is really light on this. They've, uh, they've got a special term for it. I can't remember what they call it. Slip assist or something. But uh, anyway, they've uh, put a lot of effort into making the clutch very light to use. And it certainly is. You could do it with one finger. And also it's adjustable, which is quite nice. So you can sort of bring the lever forward or back according to where you like the biting point. You can really chuck this thing around the corners if you want to. It reminds me, in an odd way, it's like a cross between my Street Triple and my Honda CRF, in that it's entirely friendly and you can just chuck it about. And because it's not uh, super powerful, it means you can sort of thrash the pants off it, wring its neck out up to the sort of maximum performance it's got. And you're not doing absolutely stupid speeds doing so. You're just enjoying what the bike's got. And I really like that about it.
And I think that's where a lot of uh, today's, you know, really powerful, powerful sports bikes and so on get it wrong, is that you can't actually enjoy them on the road, not to their full extent, you have to get them on the track. Whereas a bike like this, on roads like this, you can just enjoy, you know, without, uh, without going nuts, illegal speeds and risking your license in your neck. The engine in here is so lazy, I mean, uh, I'm in fourth at the moment and it sounds like it's just lolloping along. <laughs> Let's get into fifth right now, she's just lolloping along. If you just want to enjoy the countryside on a Sunday afternoon, this is the bike to do it on. The displays here, I talked about how classy they look, but I haven't talked about the information they give you. Uh, they've got everything you need basically in these uh, digital bits that are inlaid within the dials themselves. You've got everything you'd expect, various odometers you can invoke with the information button here on the left handlebar. So, you know, various trip computers, miles per gallon readouts, that sort of thing, and a clock. Uh, and on the other side at the moment I'm displaying uh, the range to uh, empty as well, which is a very handy feature. You've got your fuel gauge there as well, uh, which they're not missing on this bike, I'm glad to say. Uh, and also you've got a um, gear shift indicator as well, which I always like on a bike for some reason. This bike isn't fitted with heated grips, although you can get them as an option, and I think I'd probably do that. I quite like the way that trucks do the heated grips on the new bike, it's integrated into the controls really nicely. The gearbox in here is just uh, slick as you like, it just sticks the gears in with no fuss or drama whatsoever. Very little travel on the gear lever and it just feels lovely. Gearboxes on motorcycles these days are just worlds away from how they used to be. So there we have it folks, that's my uh, first impressions type review of the uh, Triumph Bonneville T100, the new for 2017 baby Bonneville. I mean, in summary, I like the bike very much. It's uh, lightweight, very, very easy to ride. It's got plenty of go. It's comfortable, lovely light clutch, sounds lovely, looks classy, really top quality finish on all the, uh, on all the items. The engine and so on, the engine case casings and finishes look really good. Triumph have really up the game on that of late. It's got all the uh, bling that the bigger T120's got, but in a cheaper package. It doesn't have things like uh, riding modes and uh, twin discs up front. Um, that the T120 has, but I wouldn't miss that. I'd rather have the lighter weight and flickability of this, uh, personally. Uh, for me, so far, this is the, uh, the best Bonneville I've ridden so far, and that's saying something because I like all the Bonnevilles. So I'm very lucky in that uh, Triumph themselves, the factory, have lent me this bike for an extended period of time, so I can uh, sort of live with it for a bit and get some uh, long-term reviews done over. So that's what I'm going to be doing, so stay tuned for those over the next days and weeks uh, as uh, sort of living with the Bonneville sinks in a bit and I can give you a bit more detail on that uh, and I look forward to speaking to you then. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.